Hello, beautiful people. It is Ashley here at Fire Intuition. I am here to do the daily reading for Wednesday. It is November 21st. Yes, yay, it's November 21st. All right, this is a general reading. It is for all signs. Do only take the message if it resonates with you. You guys now I love you. I love you. I love you. I tell you guys in every reading. I'm telling you guys today. I'm going to tell you guys tomorrow, Friday, next week. You guys already know. I love you guys. I love you. I love you. Um, for those of you who celebrate Thanksgiving, I do want to say happy Thanksgiving. I hope you guys have a beautiful Thanksgiving. I hope you guys are happy with your family. Um, it's just going to be me and the boys this year. So... Um, we just want to say um, happy Thanksgiving. So from my family to yours, happy Thanksgiving from me, Carter, Carson, and Connor. We love you guys. We love you. We love you. Um, I might do a daily tomorrow. I'm not sure because um, the boys, they're being like hella simple this year. They were like, mom, could we just put up the tree and could you make us some gumbo? And they want to make homemade rice, rice crispy treats. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm like, that's it. That's all y'all want. They're like, yeah, so they don't want, like, turkey and ham and, well, we're not eating turkey because after I um, heard about the turkeys, but they don't want, like, you know, like, um, you know, traditional Thanksgiving, like, stuffing and all that type of stuff. I don't know, plus, like, we eat a lot of seafood or, I don't know, my boys, they're like me, they like, like, sushi and we eat a lot of Japanese and stuff. I really like anything non-American unless it's, like, seafood, but, um, yeah, they're being real easy on me this year, so I'm like, yes, I'm like, yay, so... Um, happy Thanksgiving again to you guys. So tomorrow I probably will post a daily since I don't have much to do tomorrow since they're being easy on me. They said they want to watch a few movies. They want to watch Home Alone. We watch Home Alone too every year on Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, yeah, so, um, I'm just curious. What are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? Leave it, um, leave me some comments. Let me know what's going on. Um... I do want to say thanks to everyone who went to my website and checked it out. Um, so my new website is up, fireintuition.com. You guys can book there. All my information is in the description box below. And yeah, um, I'm still catching up on Instingo, guys. So give me a little bit of time for that. But I'm still catching up on Instingo. So let's hop into the reading and let's see what we got for today. I'm not going to do the love oracle since Thanksgiving is near i'm going to use my um i love this oracle deck i never use it that much but it's called the blessed be oracle deck all right um i'm also building an amazon store okay because i have like like over like a hundred and i think it's, i counted last night i think it's like 141 decks and that's like tarot and oracle decks like half of them i haven't even used yet but you guys always ask me um what decks am i using and then like you guys love me and you guys always send me mail and all that good stuff. So I have like 30 decks that were sent from you guys. So I love you guys. Thanks for the love. Um, someone actually sent me this deck and then one of my favorites. I'm not going to say her name. I don't know if she wants me to. She sent me this love oracle deck. I love her. She's very cool. Um, so she sent me that. So um, let's hop into the reading. Let's see what we got guys for today. Wednesday, November the 21st. Alrighty. So the first card we have, a blessing of the air. Alright, I'm gonna pull three of them. We have a blessing for peace of peace of mind. And then we have a blessing on the home. Okay. So love the energy here, especially with Thanksgiving being near. And at the bottom we have a blessing for the right words. Okay. So a blessing for the right words is like this is you wanting to express yourself in the right way or you're wanting someone to express themselves to you um, but in the right way or this is you trying to find the right words to say to someone that you love or that you care about. So it's like this is you like, you know, just praying because it's about blessings but it's like with these oracle decks, it's like you having the right words to say. You know, you could be in fear of thinking that you're going to say the wrong thing, you know, stuff like that but I feel like if this is you or if this is the other person, someone's definitely going to open up communication. Also, the full moon is in Gemini on the 23rd, or is it tomorrow? I think it's it's on the 23rd. It just depends on where you live at. But um, that would be a good time to release, guys. Um, I manifest full moon and new moon. You know, that's just me. So everyone's different, but you guys can manifest during the full moon. 
Um, a lot of people do rituals under the full moon as well. But um, with this full moon in Gemini, it's about shedding light. So it's it's going to be like a good full moon, but it's going to be like a different full moon. Because some people are going to be spontaneous and talkative and opening up and communicating. And I'm a Leo, so like Gemini is like totally opposite of me. So, and then with Mercury being retrograde, I don't know, I might be even more tongue twisted. But, um... It's about bringing clarity for things that have been in the dark for way too long. And people are going to start talking and communicating and telling you the truth about things and shedding light on things. And this full moon in Gemini is about opening up communication. So people are going to start talking and, you know, opening up communication. So this would be a good time to, like, you know, manifest that. Like, if you want somebody to give you clarity, if you want communication, if you're trying to get communication, ask for that, you know. That's the overall energy, a blessing of the right words. So we have a blessing of the air. Okay, so this is beautiful. This is like, you know, getting fresh air, feeling relieved, you know, stepping out in nature, you know, um, this in like kind of like enjoying the moment, kind of like the Romance Angels um, card, but this is like a fresher breath air. So you guys being able to take a deep breath, not stressed, not overwhelmed, you know, like really enjoying air, like going outside and really like enjoying nature, really enjoying like being outside and being happy. We have a blessing for peace of mind. So I love this. You know, who cannot have a peace of mind? Who cannot use this? So a blessing for a peace of mind. So this is like you getting clarity, clear your mind. You know, just being at peace, being at ease, being at peace. You know, and she's sitting back on her chair and she's comfortable. She's laid back like, like I'm going to get my peace of mind. Okay. Um, so definitely love this. All right. So a blessing for a peace of mind. And then the last one we have is a blessing on the home. So, of course, your home, your foundation, where you live, you know, so a blessing, making sure that you guys are protected, you know, watched over. Um, I stage my house three days a week. I even put, like, protection oil and, like, justice oil on my door around my house. I even put it on my office door. I even put it around the boys' doors, you know, um, like, the borders of the door. I just take a little bit of the oil and I go around the borders of the door. And then I have, like, sage, um... It's back here. It's all the way back there, but I'll show you guys one day. It's like, when you guys go to the store, it's like, you have to go to the spiritual store. And I have, like, sage in, like, the corners. But I do cleanse my house, like, three days a week. I sage myself. I sage the boys. You know, I have my holy water, my anointing oil. You know, um, yeah, you guys have to be protected. But, like, this is, like, um, I just bought a new one. So, like, a protection oil. Okay? And then I have, like, a justice oil. And it's funny because I just bought this communication oil. But I use this to talk to, like, my spirit guides and my angels and my ancestors and stuff. So I use that for communication and clarity, you know. But um, I have, like, all different types of stuff. We have, I have, like, a banish, a banish spray, like a sage spray, all that type of stuff. So um, blessing of the home. So this would be a perfect time to, like, sage, clean your home, cleanse your home. You know, Thanksgiving is about being thankful, you know, showing gratitude tomorrow, all that beautiful stuff. So let's hop into this reading. And I started it at 8.14. That's my birthday. So that's good luck. Let me make a wish really quick. That means I'm on the right path. Let me see. All right. All right. Made my wish, y'all. All right. So let's see. Enough of my jibber jabber. Let's hop into this reading for real, for real. Messages for Wednesday, November the 21st. And this is the, don't give me the lion. Oh, the haunted, it's the, the haunted tarot. This is the haunted tarot. And like I said, most of my decks I get off Amazon. The ones that you guys send me, I don't know where you guys get those from. So I can't speak on behalf of those for people that ask me where those come from. But Amazon has, like, so much of them. People tell me Walmart, too, but I never bought a deck off Walmart. We have the Six of Wands coming out. Love it. That's victory. That's being recognized for, for something, you know. Love it, love it, love it. So the Six of Wands, that's Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Energy. We have the Ten of Pentacles. What? Yeah, see? Because it's like people are about to start opening up communication, Especially during the winter time, or you broke up during the winter time. Either you broke up with someone like last winter or like this winter. If you live somewhere where it snows, you're gonna start getting communication. Someone's gonna open up. We have the nine of cups coming out. We have the strength card. Yeah, Leo energy. Um, doesn't have to be, but that's just the strength card. Um, 
We have the Seven of Cups. We have the Six of Swords. Yeah, someone's returning. Eight of Wands. Yep, you're about to get communication coming in with Wish Fulfillment. Ten of Swords with the Strength Card. So, we keep getting this Ten of Swords here. Okay? We keep getting this Ten of Swords here. I think we got it the last couple days. All right? So, we got two tens. All right? Endings bring new beginnings. So the Ten of Pentacles, it was completion with it was completion. It was done. It was over with. At the bottom of the star, look what we have. We have I said at the bottom of the star. See, retrograde to be messing me up, y'all. At the bottom of the deck, we have the star, Aquarius energy. You know, but this is someone hoping and praying and wanting something. All right. But how I'm looking at this is that and kind of like yesterday's energy. Okay. And what I wanted to say about yesterday too was that if you're dealing with someone and you're in a situation and they're with someone else or like say if you guys broke up and they got with someone else and they're with someone else the message that i was getting and the reason i'm saying it now is because i feel like i was meant to say it yesterday but didn't say it was the reason why some of them are with these females or with these males or with other people around karmic family members or people like that is because those people don't make them feel low less than or insecure okay and what I mean by that is that when they're around you, they don't feel like they deserve you. When they're around you, they feel less than. When they're around you, they feel insecure because they don't have a lot to offer or give, even if it's emotionally, okay? And with this Ten of Swords being here with the Strength card, this person is trying to become a better person, okay? Period. And I already know how you guys are in the comments like, oh, I hate them. I can't stand them. Hate is a very strong word, you know, or oh, blah, 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 this, this, and that. My thing on that is like, um, I would never... Um, disagree with how you guys feel i'm always going to respect how you guys feel but when we throw those type of words around and we say those type of things you guys can meet new people or have new people come into your life but you're just going to attract someone in a low vibration again because that's what you're kind of like putting out there we all go through lessons we all learn things i've heard someone someone has hurting me i'm sure that i've heard it several people wasn't intentionally probably not it could have been something small like hurt them by like them not feeling like i did something right or said something right you know, like you guys know me, I'm a Leo, Taurus, Scorpio. Back in the day, my my mouth and my attitude used to be like really bad, you know. But as I got older, it changed. I used to get to the point where I didn't care what I said or how I said it. That was just me. But as I got older and had children, I was like, Ash, you can't act like this. You just can't say whatever you want to say. You can't just, you know, just be so blunt. Sometimes you got to learn how to hold certain things in. You know, I was very impatient. If I was at the store, I don't care if my basket was full. You know, if the line was taking too long, I'm the type I would just walk out and have an attitude. Like, that's how I used to be. But because I release judgment and I don't have fears around certain things or me just releasing judgment in general, I can be an open book and share those kind of things with you guys because we're all human and we all make mistakes and we all go through things. You know, so just like you guys might hate somebody or dislike somebody, someone feels like that about you as well. But it's about being the bigger person and just learning the lesson and moving on and just letting go of certain things and situations. If that person is not meant to be, they're not meant to be, you know. Um, and that's the hard part because it's like when we don't learn lessons with certain people, I don't know why the universe does it, you know, and we look at it as like a punishment, but they're just going to bring someone else in that we love, that we're connected to, that we have all these strong feelings and emotions for, and they're going to put us through the same lesson, if not worse. Okay. So, um, and I told you guys my last relationship, a lot of my flaws, I've learned my lesson, even when it came to me personally, not even the things that they did, just me personally. I had growth within myself because I really sat back and I thought about it. Like I wrote out the pros and cons. I wrote out the things I said, the things I did, how I felt, all of that. And I was like, one day I was just like, damn, Ash, like, was it that serious? Like, did you have to say that? Did you have to act like that? So we all go through those things. But I've matured and I've grown and I've evolved so much since then, you know, that I don't consider myself perfect. But I'm to the point where, like, now I watch my words. I'm not going to say I bite my tongue, but I think about how I'm going to approach someone or a situation if I know it's going to hurt them or put the situation in a worse situation. You know what I'm saying? So, um, with this star card being here and what I was saying about that person being with the other person, it doesn't, they don't feel insecure with that person is because they feel like that person is in their same vibration, low. You know, that person might not be in a low vibration, but that person might accept their low vibration. Meaning like that person could have it all, everything probably have more than you to offer or whatever but they accept that person's low vibrations which is going to eventually bring them down and they'll be in a low vibration as well okay so when i see the ten of swords here in the strength card and i see the star and what we were talking about yesterday and family issues and all this type of stuff these ten of swords here they could have betrayed you and backstabbed you yes and put ten swords in your back 
But when I see the shame card and looking at the energy, if you guys know, in retrograde, I read backwards. This is letting me know that this person has suffered. We have the Ten of Pentacles here, all right? We have the Nine of Cups. This person wants wish fulfillment. They want happiness. They want material happiness. The shame card, they want something strong. They want a strong foundation. You know, this is like a big house in the back. So you know that someone has money. They're living good. You know, or it just... You know, it, it doesn't matter what the case may be, but it's a nice house. You know, it's beautiful in the back. The Ten of Pentacles are in the front, you know, which means they have, like, a long driveway to get to it or whatever. But the point I'm trying to make is that for some of you guys, this Seven of Cups is wishful thinking. Everything they've always wanted, everything they've always dreamed about. about. And you're part of that with the Seven of Cups in the star. You're part of what they want, what they're trying to focus on. You're in one of those cups, you know. You're there. They might not act like it. They might not seem like it. They might push you away, etc. But with these Ten of Swords, they're needing to take these swords off their back one by one. And it's like, to me, it's like they have 20 swords because they need to take the, the swords out of your back for hurting you. You know? Well, I'll say 15 because in order to get to the Ten of Swords, I look at it as a Five of Swords. It takes two. So it's like, if this person hurts you, it came to a point where you allowed it are things that's kept happening to get to this Ten of Swords. Unless somebody just did like so much on you at one time and you were like, damn, I just can't do it. But usually the Ten of Swords builds up over time. You know, one lie turns into another or, you know, just it just all depends. But the point I'm trying to make or what I'm trying to say, long story short, is that with this Ten of Swords being here with this trade card and the star and this Ten of Pentacles, this person's dream is to have a strong foundation, a relationship, a family, to be with someone, to be recognized, but to also recognize their partner to have victory and success on moving forward, to get everything they've always wanted and dreamed of, to come out of this Six of Swords energy where they're carrying baggage from the past, carrying things, having all these difficulties in their life, trying to overcome them, you know, the Eight of Wands and then wanting to be passionate, you know, wanting everything on their side, wanting to manifest the good things, wanting to manifest a good life, a happy home, all that, they, they want that, you know? For some of you guys, like, you're like, oh, okay, that might sound too good to be true, yeah, but it's not because you can manifest whatever you have. You just have to have the power. Everyone's a magician. You know, I'm one hell of a manifester. But I know at times when I manifest things, if I'm not thinking positive or if I'm in a low vibration that day or as soon as I get a negative thought, I, I tell myself, I look in the mirror like, damn, Ash, it's a wrap. You didn't mess that up because I know how it is when it comes to manifesting, you know. But when I'm really confident and I know I want something and I'm going after it and I'm like, Ashley, I got to have it. I need it. I want it that's when I'm in a high vibration and I'm really manifesting something because I know it's something I really, really want. And when it comes to love, we all want that. But when someone hurts us and disappoints us and put us in that energy, you know, of that back and forth, like, oh, I love them, but they hurt me, that kind of energy. It's like one day you're manifesting them to come back and be back in your life and communication. Then the next day you're like, I hate them. I can't stand them. They hurt me. So the universe is like, well, what do you want? So the universe just stops manifesting it. Sometimes we over manifest things. That's why I don't manifest the same things over and over again. You know, I manifest it. You know, if it doesn't happen after a couple months, then I might manifest it again and put it out in the universe. This time I might have or might be in a higher vibration to manifest it, you know. But if something doesn't manifest or turn in my favor, I don't get upset because obviously it's not that time. Or there has been things that I have manifested and the universe has gave it to me. And I'm like, damn, Ash, are you, are you really ready for this? Like, could you handle all of this? You know, so this person and what I'm seeing in this reading is that there's going to be communication coming in. There's going to be wish fulfillment in that because this person is going to tell you what they want. They want you. They want to be happy. You know, um, you're everything they want. We have the nine of cups. You're the other cup, which makes the ten of cups. We have this ten of pentacles, the foundation, the relationship. Now, they're healing family issues and they're healing issues outside of family and outside of you. Friends, work, whatever, these ten of swords, they're one by one taking these swords out their back. And they're healing each sword, but at a time. Okay? I don't fight this person is as strong as you to just go behind their back and be like, yep, I'm taking all five swords today. It's done with. It's over with. Boom. Done. Some people can heal like that. You know, me, it depends on the person and the situation. Some things I can just let it go. I can have a mental funeral. I can sit here and mentally have a funeral on someone or a situation and be done with it. And I can walk past you at Walmart and act as if I've never met you in my life. Like, I'm telling you, my cutoff game is so strong. Seriously. But it depends on the person and the situation. You know? It depends on how long we were friends, how long we were together, our relationship status, family, friends, whoever. But I never put that, oh, because my family, oh, because you're my friend. Because 
I love my family, but I have some friends that have been more loyal to me than some of my family members, you know? So I don't ever categorize that, oh, because we're family, this, oh, because that doesn't mean nothing. Everybody has their own way of thinking and their own, own way of viewing things and how they feel or whatever. So long story short, this person is, um, this person is, be, they're, they're trying to gain their strength. Okay, that's why we have the strength card here. They're trying to gain their strength. We have the Ten of Swords. They're, tr they're, they're slowly but surely coming to terms with their emotions. They're at the 10. All they need next is the clarity, which means that that's the communication. Clarity is like them like finally waking up to it. And they're like, okay, well, I realize that I love this person and that they didn't put all these swords in my back. Or, you know, because it's like, for some of you guys, this person feels that as if you put swords in their back. Okay, for some of you guys, you guys could have, you could have said something or did something to hurt them because they hurt you or they did something to you. But for others of you, it's like they feel like that because they are, they are, they already had so many swords in their back when you guys met this person or when they came in your life. And you're just a part of their pain and the cycle that they're going through. So blaming you or feeling as if you put the swords in their back as well. And that's what they're going to get clarity on with the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords is them realizing, like, no, you know, like, okay, this person did hurt me. She said this, she said that, or he said this, she said that. Well, how, whatever, however it resonates. But then they're going to realize and think, like, damn, well, I did this, 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 and that. I did A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They did H, I, J, K. But then I did L, M, N, O, P. You know, so they're going to look at that and, like, damn, like, I really did do wrong. Or I really did hurt this person. Or, you know, I was the first person to not show emotions or cut them off or block them out. You know what I'm saying? But this person's heart chakra was blocked. It was closed. You know, this person was so hurt, you know, dealing with so many issues, family, friends, like I said, work, this, their confidence, everything. Because with the strength card, they didn't have any confidence. They didn't know what self-love was. They didn't know what unconditional love was, you know, and that's why I feel like we have this card, a blessing for peace of mind. And I really feel like it's them. Because I feel like you guys have a peace of mind. I think what it is is that because they're not communicating with you and not telling you anything, you're overthinking and you feel like you're not at peace. You feel like you're scattered and all over the place. But when someone doesn't give you closure or communication or tell you something and you're like just up in the air about things, we overthink as humans because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to go on. Just like some of you guys were like, oh, when you get posts for days, I was thinking about you, I was worried, I was wondering what was going on. Then I get a lot of emails, like seriously, like a lot of you guys are reach out and be like, dang, fire, it's been three days, are you okay, what's going on? You know, because then you guys start to overthink, like I'm used to her posting every day, but why isn't she posting today? Like what's going on? Just like you guys been asking me lately, like all week, am I okay? You know, like am I going through anything, am I okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm okay, guys, I promise. You know, but it's because my schedule has been changing and I'm adjusting and I haven't been posting every day back to that. But, you know, like this person, they're wanting to return. The Six of Swords, they want to come back. They want to talk to you. They want to come together. They want a foundation. They want a relationship. They want to rebuild some type of emotional bond with you, which is why we have the Nine of Cups next to it. We have the Six of Wands coming in first as the first card. So this person does feel as if you're their perfect match. You know, they want to deepen this relationship. They want things to be happy. They want to celebrate. They want to open up. A lot of you guys are going to get um, communication over the holidays, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, stuff like that. For some of you guys, it's going to be hard for them. So I'm going to be honest. You might not get communication until after like new year's or something because thanksgiving christmas new all that is hard for them because you guys aren't together and things are all messed up or they're with someone else or whatever's going on so it's going to be even harder for them to open up on the holidays you would think that they might open up but some of them won't some of them might be like oh happy thanksgiving i love you i miss you and then you might not hear from them until like january 7th again like i'm not being funny because they're not able to deal with it you know but they're coming out of that low vibration they're coming out of this ten of swords with a strength card, that was it took hell of strength for them to even text you that. Happy Thanksgiving. It's probably going to take like, it probably took like a week and a half strength just for them to text you that tomorrow for Thanksgiving. I bet you, I guarantee you. They probably got it saved in their phone as a draft or they probably got the text message there and waiting and it's just under your name and they haven't sent it yet. And been wanting to send it or wanting to say something to you, you know, but haven't got that far. This Six of Swords is beautiful because remember I told y'all read backwards during retrograde so this is like the block of communication but now it's coming in and it's coming in with wish fulfillment you know for some of you guys it's coming in with wish fulfillment then like i said for others of you it's like you're going to be happy because you're going to hear from this person okay 
I feel like you guys are hoping and wanting consistent communication. It might not be consistent. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, it's going to be back and forth, but I don't feel like it's going to be consistent. Like every day, you know, it might be like once a week or every other day, but they're going to slowly but surely start communicating back with you. Their thing is that they don't want to get hurt again. And they don't want to get hurt because you guys are a perfect match. You are their soulmate. They love you. They care about you. And they don't want to hurt you. And if they hurt you, it's going to hurt them. And that's why they're in this ten of swords. Okay? Um, because they're feeling your pain, their pain, and just the pain of the situation. Which is why we have the star and this person is down on their knees praying, hoping, wishing, dreaming, everything. You know? Um, and this six of swords, like I said, wanting to come back together, wanting to rebuild. For some of you guys, money could have been an issue. Um, while they were distant or while they were gone, it's like they got money again. For some of you guys, someone just moved to a state where it's like snowing or where it's snow. Um, so maybe up north, maybe the east coast. But someone just moved or is about to move where it snows. It might not be snowing right now, but they move to where, where it snows, all right? And yeah. And then for others of you, you're going to get communication coming in anywhere from like six to eight days. The next six to eight days, um, communication is going to come in. And the communication is going to come in anywhere from like noon to like 6 p.m. Like anywhere from like that time, afternoon to like 6 p.m. There's going to be somewhere in between that time. Someone's going to text message you or message you or call you. And there's going to be communication that comes in. Tomorrow, some of you guys might get communication. Okay. But this seven of cups is here. This person is still a little bit in their head. You know, like I said, you are a part of what they want, what they're focused on with the seven of cups. Um, because it's under the six of wands. So, let's clarify some of these cards. We have the Page of Wands come out in reverse. So, yeah, remember I told you guys, it's like, this person is like, they're having a hard time communicating with you. It could be a fire sign, or this could be you guys, you know? But it's like, you feel like this person isn't putting their heart into this, or this person wants to message you, but they know if they message you, they're not going to, like, really put their heart into it. They might send you something simple and plain, like I told you guys, like, oh, happy Thanksgiving, hey, how are you? You know, for others of you, it's like, they don't want to communicate because they don't want to like disappoint you or they don't want to send messages of disappointment like because this this is you waiting for communication to come in and it's not and then it's like you get communication and it's not what you want and that's another thing they're like they want to communicate with you but they don't know what to say they don't they don't they don't have no clue what they should say and remember we have this for the overall energy a blessing for the right words see that's what i told you that's what they're praying about that's what they're thinking about that's what they're like with this star energy too they're like in their head like what can I say? Is this the right thing? Should I say this? Is it time? Is this person still mad? Should I open up? Should I communicate? You know, but that one fell out. So let's see why this Ten of Swords is here for today. Let's see why this Ten of Swords is here for today. Yep, see the moon. Look, the Ten of Swords with the moon. Coming out of some type of phase and cycle with the moon. They're releasing themselves. Some of you guys could have been dealing with a Cancer or Pisces. Um, any sign though, but that's just Major Arcana. That's their energy. Okay, for some of you guys, you're going to get communication on Monday, I feel. Um, it could be around Monday for some of you guys. All right, sorry guys. So yeah, I feel like some of you guys are going to get communication anywhere from like Monday to Wednesday. If not this week, maybe next week. But like I said, it might be a text or something small. But we have this in the swords, we have the moon. So uh, remember I told you in the moon, the full moon. The Ten of Swords, Clarity, Ace of Swords. I can't make this shit up. Remember, I just told you guys in the beginning of the reading, when this full moon in Gemini comes, it's about shedding light and bringing clarity for things that have been in the dark. What is behind the Ten of Swords? The sun. The moon is in the dark, but the moon is also the secrets and shedding light so that you can get so that you can get clarity. Okay? Um, well, the moon isn't about light, but behind the Ten of Swords, the sun is there, which means that, you know, you're going to get clarity. You know, it's like whatever has been in the dark, whatever has been kept in the dark, you're about to get clarity on that. They're about to open up and tell you everything, okay? Now, some of you guys are married to someone and you guys are going through a divorce. And this person is hella fronting, okay? You guys are going through a divorce or... Um, you guys are going through a divorce and it's like one of you guys don't want to separate. I feel like this person did something to you. They hurt you really bad and... Either you could have been the one that, like, started the progress. I mean, I said the progress. The process, like, to get a divorce or, like, to divorce that person. But then after you thought about it, you're like, no, I love this person. I really want to be with this person. Um, 
that was a seven of cups that flipped over um you're like i really want to be with this person and i feel like the seven of cups is you guys too both of you guys focus on what you guys want both of you guys wishful thinking but back to the marriage thing you guys um one of you guys okay so let me break it down like this someone hurt someone the other person you know rushed and got papers want to divorce and after they thought about it they don't want a divorce okay it's like your love for this person is even stronger now or this is how they're feeling one of you guys are feeling like this this is what i'm picking up and someone is fronting really hard okay i feel like it's them they might be telling you stuff like oh i can't wait for this divorce to be over with i met someone new blah 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 they're not with no one new okay they're probably at their apartment okay um making stove top and microwaving a can of green beans all right and they probably bought the turkey in the bag all right this person has been drinking a lot lately or they've been getting out hanging with people like drinking entertaining themselves stuff like that because they're like that it's like they're trying to grieve but they know they don't want to because they know they don't want to divorce you know but when they talk to you, they're just like, oh, I can't wait for this divorce to be over, blah, 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 blah. They're fronting, okay? This person is going to wait till, like, say if your divorce is final, like, and I don't know how divorce is because I've not, I've never been married. But what I'm hearing is, like, say if your divorce is final, like, I don't know why January 19th came, but if your divorce is final, like, January 19th or whatever, they're going to wait till, like, the 15th or the 16th and, like, try to stop it. And not want to do it. You're going to not want to do it. For some of you, I feel like um, someone else that you guys, another married situation that you're in, this person, it's like you want them to sign the papers that they want you to sign the papers. And the other person is refusing to. Someone's going to have to pay money and they don't want to. Someone's being cheap about it. But someone's going to end up paying the money to do it. I don't even know if that makes sense, but this is what I'm picking up. Someone's going to pay the money to get the divorce, and you're still going to, like, keep the house and the car. Some of you guys have kids, and you're worried about the car and the house and everything, and this person has been, like, egotistical and asshole, everything to you through this process, but they're going to, like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're going to run into the wall or something, but they're going to wake up and then shift and change your energy. And you're going to be able to keep the house, the car, or like if you guys were arguing about like the cars and the house, whatever, assets or whatever, you guys are going to get that. You know, like they're going to make sure you're taken care of. This person is going to make sure you're taken care of. And your relationship is going to become better between you guys um, within like the next six months. If you guys have been arguing and like have like that love-hate relationship, it's going to shift and change from now until like the next six months. After the divorce and everything, you guys are like going to be become friends and like be cool and be good at co-parenting and everything. Neither one of you guys are dealing with someone else. I feel like both of you guys date other people or they're dating someone, but they're not ready to like open themselves back up to like being with someone or whatever. You know, people might sleep over and stuff like that, but I don't see them really like serious. And I don't even know where all this just came from. So take it how it resonates, guys. Love you. Um, So let's see with this Ten of Swords and the Moon. Give me, let me see. Yep, we have the Queen of Swords. Truth, clarity. Okay, so the Queen of Swords is, and look, look what flipped out the Page of Cups. See, communication coming in, love messages coming in. You're going to get clarity. Um, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Remember I told you the full moon is in Gemini. I can't make this shit up, guys. I cannot make this shit up. Queen of Swords and the Page of Cups, messages coming in. But she has her hand out, meaning like you're willing to hear them out. You know, you're willing to hear what they have to say. Your sword is up. I don't feel like you guys are going to be cut though with this person because this person is not going to approach you in that way. But they're going to speak some truth. For some of you guys, it's going to be like a cutting truth, a hard truth. It might be hard for you to swallow it, but you're going to finally get clarity when this person communicates. You're going to be like, damn, that's why you're sitting there with the sword. Like, I'm willing to hear you out. But what they have to say, you might choke a little bit. You might cough on your spit or something like, oh my God, like I'm serious. Because it's the Queen of Swords energy. It's cutting truth. It's like really, it's like truthful. For some of you guys, it might hurt you. It might be too blunt. But it's going to give you that relief that you guys been wanting and needing. It's going to give you that clarity that you guys been wanting and needing. Okay? So you're going to finally get the mess. You're finally going to get clarity. All right? During this full moon cycle. Um, Let's see why this strength card is here. For this person. 
We have the hermit. Yep, see? Um, Virgo energy again. The Vir the hermit keeps coming up because a lot of people, like, have been withdrawing, walking away. You know, like, Virgos, they're going through a lot right now, too. Um, if you're a Virgo or dealing with someone, especially if their moon is in Virgo, because you guys have to think that Capricorn is back in, um, I mean, Saturn is back in Capricorn. Okay? Capricorn and Virgo are both feminine energies. Okay? Um... And then Taurus would be the bull. It's, more, it's masculine out of the three. But Virgo is a sister to Capricorn. So some Virgos are going through things karmically or just going through things or, you know, trying to get out of things or wanting to get out of things or dealing with situations and having a hard time getting out of something or dealing with something. So they're like withdrawing, they're hiding, they're going in hermit mode. With the strength card, it's like they don't have the strength to, to deal with certain situations. So they, they rather just be in hermit mode and not deal with it. It can be any sign, but especially for Virgo. You know, not for all Virgos, but if your moon is in Virgo, most definitely. Okay, remember, Virgos think a lot, even if they're not withdrawing from you, you know. Like my older brother, he's a Virgo, I love him to death, but when we go to the store, like, he's not the type that's, like, in and out. I never can, like, just pull up and keep the car running and be like, all right, bro, you're going to be in and out. No, like, I have to park the car, take the keys out, and go in there with them. Because if not, he's not going to come out the store, you know. He's not going to, he's not the type of person that knows what he wants when he goes in the store and is in and out, no. I've never seen him come out of the store in under like 15 minutes. No, it's not going to happen. So Virgos tend to overthink sometimes. Remember, I was just talking about overthinking. Sometimes we overthink because we don't know what's going on. We, we don't have clarity. Okay? So if you're dealing with someone and they have a Virgo moon, that's a very feminine energy. And if they have masculine energy around it, it's them balancing that out. Their, their masculine and feminine energy together to get clarity to make some type of decision. So... This person, they've retreated from the relationship, hermit mode, they walked away, they're going within to get clarity. This person is going to get clarity. It's going to give them inner strength with the strength card. While they're going within to get this clarity and with the strength card, it's rebuilding this person up. This person is understanding what unconditional love is. This person is understanding what self-love is. This person is understanding what love is. You are the first person that came into their life that really loved them, cared for them, nurtured them, you know? And half of them are thinking, well, why do you love me so much? Why do you want to be with me? Why do you care about me so much? They're not used to that. That's why the other person they're with, if they're with someone else, they can be married to someone else, whatever. That person doesn't make them feel insecure or low, all right? So, and it's also the connection is very, very, very strong. Alrighty, so let's get one more clarifier on this. Yep, see the seven of cups in reverse. Love it. Okay, so this is beautiful. No more illusions. They're about to, like, because it's like, with the seven of cups being in reverse, this is like, it's like a situation where it's hard for you guys to keep your head clear. It's hard for you to think at times. But this is also no more illusions, okay? So, I love this because I feel like at one point, even when they went in hermit mode, they still couldn't keep their head clear too much was going on. But now they're coming out of that energy and it's like the seven of cups is going from like them all in their head to like getting clarity and seeing that there is no illusions or no more illusions behind the situation. And that they were the reason why things were held up and that they had personal reasons that, you know, were affecting the relationship. All right. That bothered the relationship that bothered you guys. Well, not bothered. I don't even know why I said that. That affected you guys, um, affected you guys' relationship that came in between you guys' relationship. Okay, for some of you guys, um, this Queen of Swords and this Page of Cups, this can be them, this can be you, this can be you as a child wanting love because the Queen of Swords, she can be very cold at times, very cold hearted, close hearted, you know, and this is, and that's why they're looking out, they got their hand out on their faces like this because this is somebody that wants love, that's trying to get attention, you know, and look, the Ace of Cups is in reverse, this is someone that wants love and wants attention and this person is like hearing them out and listening to what they say, but they got their sword up and they're cutting, so for example, this will be a situation where, say you're watching TV or you're like talking to your girlfriend, you're on the phone, and your son or daughter comes up to you and they're like, mommy, mommy, let me tell you what happened at school, and oh my god, I love you so much and I really care about you, you know, and you're on your phone and you're like, oh my god, if you don't shut up and leave me alone, I'm on the phone with my friends, leave me alone, whatever, and they're like, I love you, and you're like, never seeing you love them back, and you're like, get out of my room, da da da, slam in the door, now we've all done that, okay? And be honest, I've done it. Trust me. I don't know what it is. I'm a Leo. I, I have kids, but I don't know. When I hear too much noise, I like boys chill out. I don't know why. Especially when they have action figures and they're like, psh, 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 psh. that noise triggers my soul. Don't know why. So there's times when I'm like that, you know, and I'm like, guys, I'm doing something, blah, blah, blah. But overall, they get so much love from me. Hugs, kisses, everything. This person got that every time. You know, that's why they're scared to, like, hand over the cup. Like, they're trying to tell their mother or, like, their father, or, like, tell somebody that's important to them that they love. They're trying to tell them something or express some type of emotion, you know? 
And it's like this person is hearing them out, but they got their sword up and they're like cutting them off. So like being cold hearted. Or this would be someone that go, oh, I wish I never had you. I can't, you, you look like your father. I can't stand you. Like that kind of energy. And again, we've all done it. I've never done that to my kids. But, I, and you know, I'm not judging nobody, but we've all done it. And this is where that started from with them. You know what I'm saying? Not getting the love and the affection that they wanted. Trying to have some type of attack. Trying to have some type of attachment. So with the Ace of Cups being in reverse, this is like them being pushed away at arm's length. You know, feeling rejected. Someone blocking them out emotionally. You know, they knew what unrequited love was since they could remember. Okay? And I'm looking at this as like in reverse. The Page of Cups in reverse is like someone that wants some type of emotional attachment. That is a child or that is in a childlike energy or younger, but it's like, it, it seems difficult for them to get the emotions and the feelings that they're lacking thereof. And that's why for some of you guys, if they're with someone else, they don't feel insecure with that person because they're not looking for the same love and that same energy as what they're looking from when it comes to you. If I'm not losing you guys, you guys gave them all of that. This other person might be like, oh, I love you. I miss you and whatever. But it's different when it comes to you. Your love is different. It's more profound. It's a connection. You know, it's a deep connection. It's different. But this person would have been rejected at a younger age. And it's affecting them as an adult as well. You know, and that's why for some of you guys, this person, you know, might be like, oh, well, why you don't do this? Why you don't do that? And then it's like when you're over loving and over affection and loving and all that, like I was telling you guys yesterday, like, oh, you're clingy, you're naggy, you're doing this and, you know, all that type of stuff. You know, because they're confused. They're conflicted because they never were really getting love. You know what I'm saying? Or this can be like in, or this can be like a type of mother that like every time they come home with bags and groceries, everything is theirs and the kids get nothing. Or like every time they go out to eat, it's like, oh no, you get macaroni and cheese, but I'm about to eat a T-bone steak in front of you every time. You know what I'm saying? And I don't judge anyone's parenting, but I'm just giving examples of like, you know, like how this kid may have felt like they suffered as a child. And so like maybe when they got with you, they were eating four course meals. You know, maybe when they got with you, they're like, damn, I never seen an Italian leather sofa, you know, or like, um, we never have, um, home cooked meals every night, you know, like just certain things. And it could have been little things like, and, but I, when I, and I don't know why I'm getting this, but it could be little things that we take for granted or that we don't show gratitude to every day that was making them feel like they were sitting on top of the world. So, like, you could have made a T-bone steak and a baked potato. You're like, oh, I eat steak all the time. But they could have been a person like, oh, well, I didn't eat steak till I was 25. I bought my first steak. That type of stuff. You know, like I said, I'm not judging nobody. But you got to think when people say stuff like that sometimes, I mean, take it how it resonates with you and that person. Some people just don't want to try it because they never had it. But in some cases, some people wait that that long to like have certain things in their life or get certain things because they were never never able to have it in their life before and then they finally get to a point where they're able to like finally have that so to them that's like hell of a privilege that's like them sitting on top of the world that's them like feeling like they're in heaven they're like yeah man you know i'm eating steak now i can go to i i mean i have i don't know why i said i have i can go to outback i can go give me a porterhouse or whatever i can go to morton's you know i love morton's you know and go to morton's steakhouse and i ain't got to worry about you know, the fact that it's a la carte, just all that little stuff. You know, it can even be something so basic as you like, oh, where they're like, let's go to Red Lobster. And you're like, man, I'm burnt out of Red Lobster. I didn't been there 80,000 times. But it may be the first time I've ever been there. Or maybe the second time. To them, that's the world. To you, you've been there so many times. You know? So, like, it's those little things that, like, you guys have to think about or realize when it comes to someone. And when they throw those type of things towards you and how they're, like, wanting you to approach it and look at it. In their perspective. So we have the Six of Pentacles coming out in reverse. And it's definitely telling me that they want to give. You know, this person wants to give. They don't want it to be one-sided. They want to give. They want it to be equal. They want it to be balanced. You know? And they want the emotions to be equal and balanced as well. And I feel like with the Six of Pentacles in reverse, they're, they're realizing and waking up to the fact that maybe they were one-sided in this relationship. Maybe they were too needy. Maybe they wanted you to do too much for them. But that's how the relationship would have started out. It would have been, it would have started out in a way where like, and for some of you guys, like, I don't even feel like you guys were doing it on purpose. That's just how you are. So you could have met them and like, you know, was cooking every day and cleaning every day and doing all that. And to them, you know, it be, they became needy. And when you stopped that, you didn't realize that you were stopping something because that's what you're used to doing. But to them, they're like, oh, you changed. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. But that's how you were. That's how you always are with or without them. Okay. So let's go into this eight of wands about this communication. 
Um, I feel like this is more of like, yep, see, I told you they're they're going to open up communication. Could be a Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, okay? Um, but we have the Knight of Cups. We have the Eight of Wands. Someone's opening up communication. Now, for some of you guys, someone's going to open up communication with you. And I'm going to be honest. They're going to open up communication with you. And you guys are going to talk or whatever. But they really are done. You know, I feel like they just want to put closure to it. Or they, they feel like they owe you closure and they're just done. You know, like even after them thinking about everything, they're just done. Because there's something that happened in between the relationship between the two of you guys. And I feel like they forgave you, you forgave them. And it's just like, you guys are going to be done because like you don't, with the ten of swords, they're going to be like, oh, well, let's be friends. Like, you know, we can hang out or whatever. You don't want that. And they're not going to want that. Someone's going to offer a friendship. The other person's going to be like, no, because I still love you or they still love you. But it's just like, you guys, it's, it's a relationship where you guys really love each other and you guys are healing or both healed. Or that's where you guys are going to end up being like healing and stuff. But you guys are going to separate because you guys love each other so much. And you guys really want to be with each other, but you guys just can't settle being friends with each other. It's like you guys want to have a relationship or you have to have a relationship with this person or you just don't want no type of relationship with them at all. Okay? And then for some of you, like this person is just done and they're moving on to be with someone else. But that's for a small few of you guys. That's for a small few. Small, small few. Okay? Yeah, because let me see why is this not a cups here. Because he has a cup in his hand, but he's looking the opposite direction of the six of swords. That's why I said that. So let's see. Um, for those that are done, you know, if you're done with them and they're done with you, why is this not a cups here? Yeah, I see the star of, um, I said the star of reverse. The star in reverse, you know, like there could be a connection between guys with the star, you know, but with the star in reverse, um, I don't feel like they're thinking negative. They just feel like there's no future left there. Like they just feel like, you know, like they want to come back in your life and give you closure. They want to tell you how they feel, you know, they want to offer you a friendship, but there was just so much that went on and they feel like there's still certain things that you guys maybe need to heal in the relationship or, you know, it can be a, a lot of different things. And they're always going to, like, this person's always going to love you no matter what. Even if they marry and move on, even when they're 50. Like, even when they're 80 in their grave or whatever. You know, this person is still going to always love you and care about you. You're always going to be that one person that they always loved no matter what. But they just feel like you guys just can't seem to get along. Or you guys just can't seem to work things out. Even when you guys do heal or separate from each other, it just never works out. All right? And then for those who are coming back and want the relationship or want to work things out, let's see what we got. We have the Empress. Some of you guys are going to get um marriage offers. Some of you guys have children with this person. But if not, they're looking at you as the Empress now, you know? And for some of you guys, when I looked at this Six of Swords and I'm looking at the Empress and what I was telling you with the Queen of Swords and the Page of Cups, they have some other issues or they have family issues that they needed to heal and they've healed it now. Or they're about, they're going through that right now. And with the Empress in the Upright, you know, they're releasing that energy. They forgave that their mother or they forgave, you know, that person or whatever has happened in that situation. And now they want you to be their Empress. Now they're able to open themselves up and love you and give you love. And they want to they wanna nurture the relationship just like you do. With the Empress coming up with the Six of Swords. Because that's you guys coming together and being on the same page. They want, they want the same thing you want. You know? So why is the Empress here? Why is the Empress here with the Six of Swords for if they return and what they want? So... Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, we have the Fool in Reverse. That makes sense. Give me one more card. And we have the Six of Cups. Yep, see? It started in childhood. Can't make this shit up. So we have the Fool in Reverse, you know? And the Fool in Reverse is like reckless behavior. You know, someone that was foolish, acting childlike in a relationship, not mature. You know, doing childish things, acting childish. You know, like I said, we have this Page of Cups over here, the Queen of Swords, not having a good relationship with their mother, father, whoever raised them. The Empress is in the upright. They've healed. They've overcame that situation. You know, so they're coming out of this energy... And they're able to think of someone else. They're able to think differently now. That would be you. You're the person that they're thinking of now. The fool is also, um, it's also like a risk taking. So it's like they're getting the, the strength and the confidence to finally take this risk to open up and tell you like, you know, like because the Ten of Pentacles is here. Like I want to marry you. I want a foundation. I want a relationship. I'm, I'm ready to raise our kids. Because whoever this is, it's like they came from a home where like 
maybe their mother was single or maybe their their dad was like absent or whatever and like them it like hurts them because besides them going through that they went through family issues and other issues and they want to raise their kids in the same home or they want you guys to get along and have a family and build and grow and stuff like that and that's why we have the six of cups that happened in childhood but the six of cups is also the past life soulmate connection between you guys and them coming back wanting to rekindle that wanting to you know um they're they, they're like they, they're in nostalgia like they're thinking about everything like when you guys first met each other when they first stared in your eyes everything but they want the connection back that's what they're thinking about with this six of cups here so most definitely and that's on the eight of wands with communication you know so someone like it's like i said the communication is going to be slow it's going to start off slow you know um Yep, and we have the Nine of Swords. So I love it. So with the Nine of Swords coming up in reverse, this is good. You know, this is them telling you how they really feel. They're getting it off their chest, their heart, whatever. And, you know, um, they're they're gaining back their willpower. And I don't really like saying that, but it's like they're gaining their willpower back. They're getting stronger. They're getting better. They're coming out of this Nine of Swords energy because it's in reverse. You know, and they're finally going to be open to willing to be open and open up to you it's going to be slow it's going to it's going to be a slow process for some of you guys with the queen of swords i feel like this person is going to come to you like they went to that person as a child wanting you to listen to them and hear them out have an open heart that's all i have to say open up your heart chakra and i know you guys are like what fire they did this they did this, this, this it's part of your lesson i promise you it's part of your lesson okay it's part of your lesson especially with capricorn being in the south node and cancer being in the north node and it's about um equal um like an equal give and take of emotions and feelings and being receptive to other people's emotions and feelings and understanding how someone feels and where they're coming from understanding their their situation you step in, like you um what do they call it um dang what do they say like you being in their shoes you know what i'm saying so think about that but if, when they come to you you know, it might you might get bits and pieces of the story. They might give it to you all at one time. You know what I'm saying? But all I can say is whoever this is resonating with, whoever wants this connection, whoever wants to work things out, have an open heart, okay, to this person. And if you have an open heart and you put your sword down and you're willing to heal this person out, you will understand this person so much better. This person will be a total, total different person to you. You probably would be lost because you'll be like, damn, like you went through all that in your lifetime. You were experiencing this. You went through that. Like, oh my God. Like some of you guys are even going to cry with this person. And be like, wow, I cannot believe this. Oh my God. Wow. Like I thought I had a rough life. You know, like that's the energy you're going to be in. Like, dang, I thought my life was bad. I thought I went through this, you know? And this person is finally going to tell you everything. And, you know, I'm an empath. So I'm up here. I'm all up here. My eyes are watering and everything. So I feel like this person really has a lot to say from their heart. Like they're, they're going to open up their heart and tell you everything you want to know. You know, and it's up to you if you're going to be, um, if you're willing to listen, you know. So, like I said, for some of you guys, have an open heart when it comes to this person. If this is what you really want, you know, for some of you guys, it's like you're going to have an open heart. And you're going to listen to this person. And even if you guys don't move on, you're just going to be so shocked and like, wow, like, oh, my God, like, wow, like, I didn't know, you know, because I always tell people, I always tell my clients all the time. And it's crazy because most of my clients are married. Like, someone put a post on my, um, made a comment on my post, like, a long, long, long time ago. And they're like, how could you be a life coach and a relationship and a spiritual coach and you're not married and you have kids? And I was like, what does that mean? That doesn't mean anything, you know? That doesn't mean I didn't learn the lessons, I didn't go through the experience. But, like, 60% of my clients that come to me, most of you guys are married, are dealing with someone that's married. Like, I'm not, I'm not kidding you. Every other time I get a reading, and there's, I'm not judging you guys, I love you guys, but every time I get a reading, if I'm doing eight readings... I usually do like anywhere from 8 to like 10 in a day. If I do 8 readings, at least 4 or 5 of them, you guys are married or dealing with someone that's married. Okay? And that's why I tell somebody, you can be married to someone, you can be with someone for 20 years and not know that person. Hell, there's my... I'm in my 30s and, and I've known my mom all my life. And there's things that she tells me that I had no idea of that I find out. But I'm, I find out as I get older and I'm like, damn, like for real? You know? So like it is, every, it, everyone's different. Everyone has a story to tell. And this would be you opening your heart and not judging the situation. All right? So your lesson is to release judgment. All right? And let's pull our true love message. Oh, this one. Oh. I guess I'll take this little thing. We have three that came out. 
So I'm gonna do any mini money mo. Just three of them flipped over. Y'all know I'm not gonna take three. So any mini money mo. Ready? Mm. The distorted masculine. Wow. I can already tell you guys what this is about. Because if they got to watch time. Oh my God, look guys, time. It keeps coming up, time. Remember, I keep getting time in my readings, time. Wow. We have bank, the police, the SWAT team is out. Money's on the ground. The sun is out. Wow. Um, let's get an overall message. I'm going to read that one, but let's get an overall message. Give us an overall message for today. We have easy does it. There is no need to hurry or force things to happen. Everything is occurring in perfect timing. Wow, what the... F Guys, timing, oh my God, for the last week and a half, timing has come up in all my readings. And then look, we have infinite supply. You are supplied for today and all your tomorrows. This is you and that person. Like This is like an, an, an infinite supply of love. There's love all around you guys. There's love all around them. But I feel like neither one of you guys are focusing on that. You're focusing on the love with that person. Oh my God. And look what we have. Unconditional love. Love yourself, others, in every situation, no matter what the outward appearance may be. And what did I just tell you guys? Have an open heart and hear this person out and release judgment. That is a part of your lesson, to release judgment. Because some of you guys, when I say release judgment, some of you guys have had the better life. You were brought up in a better home. You maybe had both of your parents. You maybe did live great. You probably do got the better job. You probably, you probably do got the better car. All of that. But the universe is telling you, like, that's all material things. It doesn't matter. Release judgment. Finally hear this person out. Have an open heart. Okay? So, let's read our message for today. The distorted... Uh, masculine. All right. Oh my God, this video is almost an hour. I gotta hurry up. It says, be aware of where the distorted masculine may be showing up in your life. Let it go with love and live a fully blessed life in the now. What did I just tell you guys? Release judgment. Let it go with love. The distorted masculine is here for all of us to see every day of our lives. It is characterized by an unwillingness to trust ten tending to ignore emotions and intuition, wanting proof of everything and initiating on a logical or rational approach. Part of the mode we all grow up with to a greater or lesser extent. This, this old saying is now becoming an obstacle. At first, we may still believe that the distorted masculine owns or runs this world. But if we look closer, we can see that he, his refusal to acknowledge and support the divine feminine is ca causing him it's causing him to weather and die through life. We have all created the society we live in today. How long the distorted masculine continues to exert his power is up to each and every one of us. The distorted masculine loves power of the sake, no, power for the sake of it. And separates rather than togetherness. Seeing like when they're going through ups and downs, they rather separate then come together because as a man and how the world has it oh i'm a man the man is supposed to do this the man is supposed to do that i'm a man i do this i do that so it's like you guys know what i'm saying let me finish he tends he tends to work within a win-lose dynamic or puts himself in a win-lose dynamic you were the win-lose dynamic that's why i told you guys with that other female whoever he's with or whoever they're with male or female because we can all be a masculine energy my whole chart is pretty much masculine it just depends but i'm not this though um they don't feel like they're in a win-lose situation with them. With you, they're in a win-lose situation. All right? Where there can only be one winner, one first prize. They want to be the first prize. Taking advantage and taking whatever is available are seen as business as usual in their mode. So naturally, we see a lot of distorted masculine in the corporate environment and in the damage done 
to our forests and oceans. It is tempting to feel helpless in the face of such an intense force. But this dragon has a soft, vulnerable, has a soft and vulnerable place because without the feminine forces to feed him, he cannot survive. And that's when they start going in hermit mode. And that's when they go into their feminine energy. Makes sense. You have drawn this card today because the distorted masculine is still influencing your life. Do you live by your clock and your diary, pushing everything aside until your work is done? Do you ignore your intuition or the messages from your body urging you to rest and relax? Are you afraid to feel your emotions for fear of hurt or being overwhelmed or appearing or the world looking at you as weak? Your angels and spirit guides want you to know that now is the time to bring this imbalance to your conscious awareness. Acknowledge it, bless it for what it has taught you, and let it go. It is time to live in and for the present without this influence. Wow. And that's what they're going through. Everything I just said. Wow. Oh, shoot. And now the book's flying across the room. I can't make this shit up, guys. I can't. I cannot make it up. I love you guys. All right? Have a beautiful Thanksgiving. I might come through tomorrow. Let this sit on you guys. Let it sink in. I'm not going to um, explain it. You guys already know what it is. I love you. And I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye.